the blame game. Everyone, I'm Matthew Cormo with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. She also happens to be in this hotel room with me right now. Say hello, Brooke. Hi. <laughs> and now on to our topic, the blame game. Okay, so in this career, you're going to experience many ups and downs, and sometimes it can feel like all downs, whether it's been months or years since your last booking, or you're still looking for that agent or your next agent, and the list goes on and on, and sometimes on and on and on. And if you like to hang out with other actors, chances are you spend the time with them talking about the industry and maybe lamenting your own career path. Though let's be honest, the word lamenting is probably not the right word. Complaining, griping, protesting, yelling, right? And if you're even more honest with yourself, these complaints tend to get focused on a target. In other words, we actors love to find someone or something to blame about our current situation. It's understandable. We feel like we have no control over our destiny, which then sort of implies that someone else is in control of our destiny. That in turn feels oppressive because this puppet master is clearly against us since we're being thwarted at every possible opportunity to forward our career. In short, it feels personal, deeply personal because we keep offering up pieces of ourselves in all the auditions that we submit and we seem to get nothing in return. That is, we keep getting rejected. How could it not feel personal? I mean, casting is definitely to blame, right? Am I right? Can I get an amen? After all, they're the ones who aren't casting me. Well, for some perspective, let's do a thought exercise. Assume that you have to cast your very own web series starring you. Hooray! Now that you're cast, you have to figure out who's going to play the best friend, the love interest, your parents, uh, a co-worker, and maybe that kooky neighbor. So now do a quick casting search through your brain of all the actors that you know in your market or who are in your community and narrow down each role to your top three choices. Now let's take the kooky neighbor. Who's your top choice to play that character? If you actually take me up on this challenge and go through this thought exercise, you'll actually get excited about this possibility of casting this person you know who you know their work, you know what they're capable of, in this role as a kooky neighbor. But now I ask you, what about those other two actors you were considering? What about all the other actors you rejected for the role of kooky neighbor? See, it's kind of ridiculous when you put yourself in casting shoes to look at it like that, that you are rejecting all those other actors. No. No, you're actually lamenting, to use that word again, the fact that you couldn't cast all of those top choices. It's actually painful to casting directors when they don't get a chance to cast these people, these actors that they become fans of. So in other words, maybe casting isn't to blame for your current situation. In fact, some actors will get mad or resentful that they keep getting called back in for the same show, episode after episode, season after season. Spoiler alert, I've done that before. But again, when you put yourself in casting shoes, it seems silly to be anything but thankful for their belief in you. They believe in you. Full stop. They're not trying to torture you. They're fans of you. Okay, so let's switch gears because sometimes we like to blame our reps. Now, there are times when this is warranted because maybe the relationship is toxic or it's just clear that you and your agent or your manager just aren't a good match. But assuming that's not the case, then they are doing the best with what they have. They can't make your headshots work better for you. They can't improve your demo reel. They can't add more training to your resume. And they can't be in the room with you while you audition to make sure that you're grounded and being authentic in all of your performances. Though, side note, some reps do like to watch back their clients' tapes to give notes and maybe redirects but that's usually more of an exception to the rule. And honestly, it can just give one more reason for the actor to blame their rep if they don't book the role. So can you tell them now making the case that maybe your reps aren't to blame for your current situation? Except of course, in those rare occasions where, like I said, it is a toxic relationship, in which case you should get out of that relationship. So if it's not casting, if it's not reps who are to blame, then who could we blame? Ooh. 
M maybe it's your location because you're not in Hollywood. Or maybe it's the suits in the studios who are making those final casting decisions. Or maybe it's just the in industry in general that's to blame. Or maybe it's that second biscuit I had for breakfast this morning that's to blame. I know. Maybe it's God that's to blame. Yeah, that sounds right. The God of the universe is conspiring against me to make sure that I don't move forward in my acting career. Yeah. Maybe it's Matt at Get Taped who was my reader and mispronounced a word during my favorite take. Or maybe Matt mislabeled my file even though I didn't give him any actual taping instructions. Or maybe Matt didn't tell me that I flubbed that one word on the fourth page of my five page audition sides. Or maybe Matt didn't perfectly crop my video to the exact specifications that were in the taping instructions. Yes, Matt is to blame. Or, or maybe there isn't anyone to blame. Maybe in my efforts to channel my resentment, my anger, my sadness into some sort of target, I've actually become the one to blame. Wow, that's uncomfortable. Now, if you're still watching, that means you're either in a really good headspace right now in regards to your acting career, or you're sensing some truth in what I'm saying as it relates to you and your journey. That maybe you are susceptible to lashing out at an imaginary enemy who doesn't exist. No one is out to get you. And let's be clear, when you accidentally slate your information out of order, that has nothing to do with anything in terms of your booking ratio. You flubbing one word or having one hair out of place or realizing that you were slightly soft in your focus during your audition has nothing to do with your booking ratio. So none of that stuff is worth blaming. The moral of this entire video is to control your controllables. As long as you are doing everything you can to make your art as valuable as possible, then everything else is outside of your control and therefore not worth worrying about so much. It's certainly no one else's burden to bear. I mean, if you felt unprepared at your last audition, was it really because there was only 24 hours before the deadline? Or was it that you prioritized a social engagement over prepping for that audition? Or was it because you've been putting off that script analysis class that would give you the cold reading skills to nail it even within that 24 hour deadline? Look, this is a slow season. If you're watching this in May of 2023 during the WGA strike, it's a perfect time to get introspective and do some of the work that might unpack some of these ideas. Take stock of your controllables and be 100% honest with yourself if you indeed are as truly prepared as you think you are when it comes to your potential as an artist. This includes training, but it also includes learning everything you can about this industry, watching enough TV and film to understand what is out there right now, reading the news of what is changing in our industry day to day, month to month, learning about the other disciplines that exist on a professional set and cultivating relationships with other members of the community. And if you still feel like there is someone or something to blame, drop a comment below. I'll try to help you unpack it, but be forewarned, the ultimate answer might require more work on your part, including something as simple as journaling or maybe something more involved as seeing a therapist. Because those feelings of resentment and anger left unchecked, whew, they will do some damage. They will eat you away inside until you're just a shell of the person you used to be. That's why so many actors end up leaving this industry. This is a complicated, nuanced topic, and it's far too detailed to unpack in a short video like this. So I'll leave it there for now, and hopefully this did shed some light on your own journey in this industry and your relationship to this feeling of blame towards other people or other things. And as a corollary, I do want to mention that there are things in this industry worth fighting for that are travesties that do represent injustices in this business. And so I'm not trying to trivialize these feelings of blame and trying to make a blanket statement about them. No, not at all. But if you are honest with yourself, you may realize that some of the blame that you're trying to place on the industry or on a specific person in the industry might not be their fault after all. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on set.